Hi, this is Julie. I'm here with Cameron from r and Games, and he's going to explain it, explain to us this new game called East India Companies. Yeah, so the game, it generally, you're taking over a 19th century trading empire. Now, how it kind of goes is essentially you're ruling over this naval fleet that's coming over and taking resources from the supply market, and you'll be trading spices, tea, coffee, and silk oh. from any of these locations and bringing them back to this Western London market to go ahead and sell. And throughout this, you'll have agents that can help you increase the price of which you sell at, maybe decrease the cost at which you purchase things. You can mark and manipulate player turn order or other fares and fees as you go further west, or sorry, east into the markets. You also have the ability to purchase ships. And so as the round progresses, you'll go into different eras. And from here, you'll have all different abilities and options of the ships you want to purchase. Oh, wow. And these will even different not only in price and era which you can purchase them from, but also the cargo hold and the speed. So you'll start off with these simple galleons that are fairly slow and don't hold that much. But as you progress and purchase better ships, you can go for maybe some that hold more cargo or mm -hmm. even faster ships, which work out to your ability because throughout the phase, eventually you'll go to a navigation phase okay. in which as you come to these markets, the faster ships will be able to meet to the supply market and be able to purchase them before anybody else purchase oh, them. So you get to wow. buy them at the lowest cost. And then similarly, these fast ships will then get to go back over here to the London market and sell them before the market's already been saturated by your competitors. That's so it's so a cool. neat little mechanic between balancing the speed yeah. and also the cargo capacity. In addition to all of these, you can just kind of rule out. Um, you can also expand with your agents your ability to increase port size. So not only can you upgrade to better ships, mm -hmm. but you can also have up to like up to four different ships that wow. you can go out. And in addition to this, as you also expand out between the different ports, you can also, uh, like with the first upgrade, as you go to a third um, ship in your fleet, you can also stock and hold resources in case it's not a great time to sell and you want to wait for a better opportunity. Okay. And then honestly, my favorite part for the agents is over here by the investor and the governor. They're respective to their individual demand and supply markets, but what you can do is you can actually manipulate the supply market or demand market individually. Ooh. So normally what would happen is you would take these dice mm -hmm. and you would go ahead and roll them and then remove for the supply market, you're going to add these cubes plus whatever is here. And if you've chosen the governor action, you get to choose which of these you would like to add. So yeah. you can maybe don't want much silk or maybe you want to increase and maximize spices. You can choose that. And other people can come on top of you in that same spot and see what you're, peek at what you're doing as well. Oh, wow. Um, similarly with the demand market, you would roll dice and choose the, um, card that you wanted to and you would remove the cubes from here so as so that kind of goes into the theme as as you bring over these ships what everyone will do is they'll have their hand of ships in their ports take them in and they'll secretly place them out over here you'll notice that there's these coins over here and the further you go east the more costly it's going to be to get to these rarer but more expensive resources oh, wow. that you want to buy okay versus spices over here it's cheaper to get to. Sure. So that everybody will go and turn order by placing these down and they'll just kind of stack and lay on top of each other. Okay. And then what we'll do is then, and taking from the top of the reverse, we'll start flipping them back over. And we'll lay them out over here and size them up according to speed and it'll lay on top also according to oh, wow. who goes first. And so then we would go from left to right, starting what's, what's on top, mm -hmm. then going to the left, or sorry, going to the right, and then you'll start purchasing all of the stuff that once you filled up the supply market, you'll start purchasing these sorts of things. And then you'll do the same thing. Everybody will collect the ships after they docked them all or brought them back with the resources. Okay. And you can bring them back and sell them with speed order again. Wow. The other neat mechanic about this is that you don't have to have a good resource run to stay competitive. Really? Mm -hmm. Because normally where it's, there's the difficulty of predicting all of the prices, whether this is going to go, what other people are going to do, right. you have the stock exchange, which adds a really, really forgiving place and also <laughs> can be really um, as rewarding as well if you're doing it correctly. Because a lot of the times you want to just take all your liquid cash and invest them into stocks, especially if you're able to guess who's going to be I guess, earning the most. Because okay. every time we make our sales, mm -hmm. we keep it, we put all our money on the sales tile for that round. Then we do two things. We compare them to everybody else. So depending on the number of players that you're playing with, you um, 
typically the first player will, or the person who has sold the most this round, their stock will increase by two points. And then the second most sells will be increased by one. And the third most is going to stay. And if you're doing a four player, the fourth, actually the last player might reduce their stock price. Oh my gosh. So you compare them to other players. But then you also, if you notice over here on these sides, you have this, um, basically it's to track, compare yourself against your last quarter. So if all of a sudden, if say round one, you've started off and made like 20 something dollars mm -hmm. rounding down, you then, your stock will increase by two points in addition to that. So you're always, your, your yeah. stock is moving up by how you compare to others and how you've compared to your previous self. So again, with the stock exchange, there's a round in here. It's actually round um, the second portion of the round mm -hmm. where you can purchase other people's stocks. You, that's a really good idea for betting before we start doing all of this. Okay, who sure. do I think is going to earn a lot of stock? Or, or I guess increase their stock value by a lot. And I really want to purchase a bunch of theirs too. Wow. So it's a really nice mechanic. The other thing too is that um, that's just a good way in case, I guess, you maybe be at the end of the turn order or you may think that you're not optimized for this round to earn a lot of money, you can still stay on top of it. And that's all accumulated towards the very end of the game where you count the wealth of your stocks plus the total sum of your actual money and okay. currency that you have. And everybody starts with two president stocks of their own, but it just kind of goes and plays around like that. Now, uh, you said it's from two to four players, right? Yes. And how long does it take to play? Oh, goodness. Uh, it's The box says 90 to one hour and 20 minutes. For your first game, you're looking at probably around like a little over two hours um, okay. for your learning. But if you're already running in with the rules and everybody knows what you're doing, you can do this really quickly really because quick. a lot of this just kind of plays very, very snappy. Okay. And I am guessing the age, probably this is like 14, right? Yeah, 14 yeah. up. Yeah, that's what I would say. I would think the, so. the mechanic of the stocks and the exchange. But you could sure. probably teach it to younger than that, but with some rules adjusted. Right. And what is the MSRP on this? Um, I believe it's 60. Right 60? now we're at the convention, we're selling it for 55. Okay. Awesome. Well, I think it's really pretty. It's very, very long for me, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it plays very, very nicely. I've honestly, I don't know what to really compare it to. There's just so many fun mechanics in balancing it. And mm -hmm. it's, I guess that's the really good way to say it. It's a very balanced game and okay. how it plays like a mid Euro style game. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for explaining it to me. Yeah, I appreciate of course. it. Of course. All right.